Today, we're gonna to look at the biggest startup failures of all time, so that we can learn from them. What do they have in common, and how do we avoid falling into that trap? This is Raw Startup. I've researched all kinds of sources to make a top 10 list of the biggest startup failures, looking at how much was invested and lost. And yes, we're talking billions and billions of dollars just on this top 10 list. I've always been an entrepreneur. With Vivina, we raised over $60 million and have more than 37 million users all over the world. I've always been fascinated with what you can learn from big successes, but also big failures. I've been especially fascinated by these really, really big failures. How the heck did this happen? How did it get this far? That's what we're gonna look into today. Finally, we'll look at the top 10, see what they have in common and what we can learn from that. And I guarantee you, you will be surprised by some of the things we find. Always remember that behind these failed startups are real people. Real people that invested blood, sweat and tears into those startups. And yes, even though they failed, they did invest blood, sweat and tears. Building a startup is rough. Building a startup that fails is even rougher. So well done for trying. I have nothing but respect for people that try. And for most companies on this list, people really, really tried. Unfortunately, we also have serious mismanagement and fraud on the list. With that, let's get to the list. They're ordered by how much was invested and lost, starting by the lowest number. All the amounts have been converted to today's money, so that it's fully comparable. Number 10, Terra Alliance. Terra Alliance comes in on the list as number 10, with 352 million invested in today's money, the day they shut down for business. They didn't actually go bankrupt. They got new investors, new team, and completely pivoted the business in 2009. Terra Alliance was in the business of looking for oil, but in a very, very different way. They were looking for oil by using low and slow flying airplanes to find the oil. A very, very creative approach, but I'm not sure it ever worked. Still, it was a very interesting journey. Founder Erland Olson really wanted to use US U-2 spy planes for this job. However, there was a problem. U-2s were not available for commercial use. They were only available for military use. Instead, Olsen went to Russia and acquired two Sukhoi Su-27 fighter jets. I guess you can find a lot of things for sale in Russia. And if you have the money and willing to spend it, you can buy it. Olsen was definitely willing to spend the money. The story is that Olsen told his investors that this would be a quick IPO and the company would be worth $60 billion. In his own word, that would make him a three commas guy. One, two, three. And yes, that's a billion with a B. And yes, Olsen really had a way with words. After having spent $300 million, he said the following. We spent like NASA during the Apollo program, and we were on our way to the moon as well. With that kind of aggressive spending, they ran out of cash in 2009, and the game was up for Terra Alliance. It got so bad that even some of the investors shoot Olson. Apart from the big spending founder, it looks like the product never worked. They never really found a product market fit. With that, let's move to number nine. Number nine, Amped Mobile. Amped Mobile comes in on the list as number nine with 400 million invested the day they shut down in 2007. After only being in business for two years, that's pretty aggressive spending. Amp Mobile was launched in 2005 as a new mobile phone provider that targeted a younger demographic and featured downloadable and streaming video as well as live events, which was all new at the time. So what happened? Why did they only exist for 24 months? There are multiple theories out there, but it does look like their credit check policy killed them. Amp just weren't restrictive enough on their credit check. To boost growth, they let anyone become a customer. That included a lot of people that really couldn't afford the service. On top of that, they gave people 90 days credit. Guess what? After 90 days, almost half the customers couldn't pay their bills. So although Amp had a pretty good success, they just ran out of money. They couldn't pay their providers and had to shut down. I would probably call this mismanagement at least some pretty bad business decisions. With that, let's move to number eight. And yes, we have some very, very colorful people coming up now. Number eight, Pay by Touch. Pay by Touch comes in on the list as number eight with 420 million invested the day they shut down in 2007. 
Pay by Touch was a payment provider that offered biometric authentication at the point of sale, which was supposed to be a low cost alternative to other payment options. The article is pretty clear. Things started to go wrong even before they started. Stay tuned as things go south very, very quickly. This was the first picture I could find of CEO and founder John P. Rogers. And yes, that is what you think it is, a mugshot. In Minnesota, even before Pay by Touch was founded, Rogers Chiropractic Clinic had closed down with unpaid bills and lawsuits. Not one, but two girls had reported Rogers one for abuse, the other one for trashing her house. At a traffic stop, police also booked him for suspicion of using cocaine. That's where the mugshot's from. You look at this background and think, hmm, this might not be the perfect profile to come to Silicon Valley and raise almost half a billion dollars. But that's what happened. Investors, great job on vetting this guy. I'm thinking maybe you should have looked a little bit closer before you put almost half a billion dollars into the company. According to one insider, only a minimum background check was made because Roger had such a common name. Hmm, I guess I'm not falling into that category. Not only did Rogers have a pretty shady background, he was also extremely good at spending money. He spent $150 million buying competitors. And at one point, there were 750 people working at Pay by Touch. In 2007, Pay by Touch lost $137 million based on a revenue of 600,000. This clearly was not gonna last. And by May 2007, they could not make payroll and Pay by Touch was in real trouble. The investors tried to save the company, but Rogers made this completely impossible. San Francisco investor Philip Bright said to SFGate that he got some over the top unbelievable calls from Rogers. He was screaming and cursing. The language was worse than a drunken sailor. I don't think there was anything wrong with the basic idea of pay by touch. And when we think about it, we do pay with biometrics today. However, it doesn't matter how good your idea or concept is. In the end, it's all about execution. With that, let's go to number seven. Number seven, WebWan. Webwan comes in on the list as number seven with 570 million invested the day they shut down in 2001. This is one of the most famous bankruptcies from the first dot-com crash in 2001. In many ways, a very interesting case and one of the really big bets on e-commerce founded only two years after Amazon was founded in 1996. Webwan was an online grocery store where the customers could pick a 30 minute window where they get their stuff delivered. If you've seen my other video on why startups fail, Webvan is a pretty interesting case because they did a lot of the things that were in that video. So make sure you check it out. First, there's premature scaling. Webvan went into 10 markets almost right away and invested in very expensive infrastructure. That just meant the money ran out really, really quickly. Then there was bad timing. Neither the technology nor the customers were ready for Webvan. It was just too early. Then there's a general product market fit. It very much relates to the timing. It's all just too early. Back in the late 90s, neither technology or customers were ready for WebWAN. They just weren't ready to buy groceries online. And when you think about it, now, 20 years later, we're barely buying groceries online. So 20 years ago, no way. They should have taken the time to grow one or two markets at a time, figured it all out, and then scaled later. Although I'm sure they had investors breathing down their neck saying, you gotta grow right now. That killed the company. All this is easy to see now looking back. When you're in it, it's obviously different, but I'm sure that we, but also Amazon has learned a lot from WebWan. Finally, a case with no drama, no mismanagement or fraud. WebWan went for it, it didn't work, but that's life in startups. With that, let's move to number six. Number six, Abound Solar. Abound Solar comes in on the list as number six with 688 million invested the day they shut down in 2012. Abound Solar was manufacturing thin film solar panels. A lot of money was flowing into R&D in solar as the cost of polysilicon rocketed in 2008 and the industry was looking for alternatives. However, when the costs plummeted, it was hard to compete. Avant Solar actually isn't the only solar company on this list. 
there's more to come. It has been a little bit difficult to find information about what happened here, but it looks like when the price of polycyclone plummeted, they were just too expensive and couldn't compete. If you do know something about a bound solar, please do put it in the comments so people can see what happened here. With that, let's move to number five, and this is a big one. Number five, Theranos. Theranos, the big scandal of 2018, comes in on the list as number five with 714 million invested the day they shut down in 2018. Theranos was making a blood testing device that could test you for any diseases with only a tiny blood drop. Theranos was run by the very charismatic Elizabeth Holmes with the deep, deep voice. This is what happens when you work to change things. And first they think you're crazy, then they fight you, and then all of a sudden you change the world. And it did look like Elizabeth Holmes was going to change the world back in 2014. She was on top of the world, on the cover of every business magazine here in the US. But there was a problem. The product never really worked. There was a product, the Edison, but it could never do what it claimed it could do. It never actually worked. They misled investors, bullied employees, and there might have been criminal behavior. It all came crashing down as the Wall Street Journal started reporting that things were not what they looked like at Theranos. We still don't know for sure if there was criminal behavior as it's still in the courts here in San Francisco. All this has been really well documented. There is a book called Bad Blood. It's highly recommended. Also an HBO documentary and even a podcast. So many things went wrong at Theranos. Obviously there was no product market fit, but it was all fueled by mismanagement and fraud on top of that. This is a crazy story and pretty soon there will be a Hollywood movie about it. So read the book or wait for the movie. According to the rumors, it will star Jennifer Lawrence as Theranos founder, Elizabeth Holmes. That's it, let's move to number four. Number four, Better Place. Better Place comes in on the list as number four with 742 million invested the day they shut down in 2013. Better Place was building a global network of battery charging and battery switching services for electric cars. The key was the battery switching that meant you could have a fully charged battery in minutes instead of a long charge. I always felt this was a cumbersome solution to a problem that wasn't big enough and would solve itself in only a few years when batteries will be larger and charge faster. Building a network of battery switching stations just didn't seem like the right solution. In total, Better Place ended up selling 1,500 cars. That's not a lot compared to the 700 million invested. On top of that, they actually weren't designing and manufacturing the cars. The car manufacturers were doing that. Still, Better Place ended up investing half a million dollars into every car ever sold. That's a bit of a stretch. Better Place clearly never found a product market fit. The buyers weren't ready to buy the specially designed cars and actually manufacturers weren't ready to manufacture them. I think there's a really basic lesson here for entrepreneurs. Find a problem that's big enough and solve it. I think Better Place didn't either. With that, we're getting to the top of the list. We're now in the top three. Number three, Jawbone. Jawbone comes in on the list as number three with a billion and 28 million invested the day they shut down in 2017. Jawbone developed and produced wearable technologies such as wristbands, wireless Bluetooth headsets, and related technologies. Jawbone was always struggling. They were in fierce competition with Fitbit, and very often it looked like Fitbit were able to offer very, very similar products, but at a lower price. Jawbone also had multiple legal disputes with Fitbit. In 2015, Jawbone accused Fitbit of stealing trade secrets. In 2016, there was a patent dispute that Fitbit won. There is clearly a question of product market fit here. There might have been a product market fit, but it felt like the competition always had a better product market fit. There's more to Jawbone than just product market fit. They have something that a lot of others on this list have too. We'll get to that when we're done with the list. In such a capital intensive industry as hardware, there just isn't room for any mistakes. Hardware is just very, very hard. With that, let's get to number two. And number two is very different than anybody else on the list. Number two, go.com. Go.com comes in on the list as number two with 1 billion and 143 million invested the day they shut down in 2001. Go.com was not a traditional startup with normal investors. 
Go.com was a startup inside Disney. I added Go.com to the list because Disney actually made it public how much they invested and lost in this company. That qualified them for this list. Disney wanted to build a portal that contained all of Disney's content. They even acquired a search engine, InfoSeek, to add on top of Go.com. Things did not always go as planned. They were sued by a company called GoTo.com, saying that the Go logo looked too much like their GoTo.com logo. Here it is, uh, take a look for yourself. But Disney actually lost the case and could not use the Go logo. After three years of not getting where they wanted to be, Disney in January 2001 announced that they were shutting down Go.com as well as the search engine. And they were laying off around 400 people. Before we get to number one, make sure you stay tuned because when we're done with the list, we'll look at what they have in common, why did they fail, and what can we learn from that. And there we have it. We have a winner. We've gotten to number one of the biggest startup failures of all time. Number one, Solyndra. Solyndra comes in on the list as number one with 1 billion and 822 million invested the day they shut down in 2011. Now that's a lot of money invested and lost. Cylinder was a manufacturer of thin film solar cells. The secret sauce of the product was they didn't use polysilicon. Not using polysilicon was a big advantage in 2008 where it was extremely expensive and there was even a shortage of polysilicon. In 2008, the price of one kilogram of polysilicon was $400. This was a major advantage for Solyndra. However, that advantage disappeared quickly. The price plummeted all the way down to $50. And today, it's even lower. The high price in 2008 was due to a shortage. As soon as the supply increased, that shortage disappeared and the price plummeted. As the price of polysilicon fell, Solyndra just couldn't compete against cheap Chinese solar panels. Solyndra's solar panels were just too expensive. In its core, this is a lack of product market fit. They just couldn't build a product at a price that the market was willing to pay. I'm not going to get into the politics, but Solyndra is a little bit of a hot potato uh, because some of the money comes from the federal government. This happened during Obama, and in some circles, Obama is blamed for this. Okay, that's the list. Now, what can we learn from this list? Looking at the list, it becomes pretty clear there are two reasons why these really big failures happen. Either there's no product market fit or there is some mismanagement, bad decisions. In some cases, there's both. Take Theranos, there's no product market fit, but there's also some serious mismanagement. Same is probably true for Terra Alliance. Another interesting thing with this group is that they're all from the US. Not one company outside the US made this list. Go America. Actually, when you look at the geography, it gets even more crazy. Nine out of 10 on this list are from California. And the ones from California are either here from San Francisco Bay Area or down south in Los Angeles. Sure, this makes California look kind of bad, but that's not what the list means. The list means that here in California, people are willing to take really, really big bets. When you take big bets, you will win some, you will lose some. This list has a lot of the lost investments, but if you look at the winners, it is much more impressive and a lot more staggering. And the wins are much bigger than the losses. Here are some of them. Facebook, Google, Apple, Cisco, Intel, Oracle, Salesforce. You know, I could keep going. There's another thing I noticed when I researched all these companies, specifically their founders, something a lot of the founders have in common. And I think it could be a contributing factor to where it ended up. All of these companies have very charismatic founders that are really good at raising money. An example of that is Hossein Rahman of Jawbone. Here's what a Fortune magazine article says about him in 2017. Jawbone had all the elements of a Silicon Valley legend. Its CEO was a larger-than-life fellow named Hossein Rahman, who talked big and was a master of racing and spending money. Okay, now let's play a little game. Couldn't we actually take Jawbone and replace it by Theranos and the founder to Elizabeth Holmes? Wouldn't that still be a true statement? Probably. You could also do that with Erland Olsen of Terra Alliance and a lot of the other companies on the list. It looks like these founders were a lot better at raising money than running a startup. And those are two very, very different things. That's it. If you want more videos just like this one to help you build your amazing startup, please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching.